Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about how and when you should be getting your thyroid lab test done. So what we're gonna be talking about is how to do this correctly. And what you need to know as a thyroid patient is that there is a basically one right way to do it and a lot of wrong ways to do it. And you're probably gonna be surprised that you're breaking some of the rules and breaking these rules will impact the results that you get when you order and check your thyroid. Okay, so if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist. I specialize in treating thyroid problems, helping people with hormone imbalances, and of course, weight loss. So let's talk in, let's jump into our uh, topic today. And we're gonna get out the whiteboard for this and that is thyroid testing. And we're gonna be talking about, how, again, how to do this correctly. If you haven't already, be sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell, especially if you have thyroid problems because I think you're gonna like the sort of stuff that we talk about. Um, and so let's jump in here. Again, it's thyroid testing. We're gonna be talking about how to do it correctly. And these are important things that you should be, you should know about, especially if you have thyroid disease. And what I will say here is this is going to be, there's, let's see, uh, you can see all that. Yes, there's seven of these things here that you need to understand. So seven sort of topics and seven things that you need to make sure that you're ticking off. Now, I'm going to tell you this up front. You do not have to do all of these things every single time you get your thyroid labs tested, but you should be aware that each of these things that we're going to be talking about can impact the results that you get. Okay, so if you are somebody who has never had this done, you absolutely need to do all of these things as perfectly as you can so that your first baseline set of labs are, you know, as optimal or as correct as they can possibly be, because then you can make an informed decision off of that result. But if you have never done this, you absolutely have to do it first. But every subsequent time, you don't necessarily have to. I'll kind of let you know which things are, you know, perhaps more important, which are not as we go here. So the first step is you have to ensure that you're getting a full thyroid lab panel. Now I have defined what I think is a full thyroid lab panel here. You're going to get different definitions based off where you go. I tend to err on the side of being more complete. Um, and that's because I use every single one of these lab tests to help determine what is going on. Now, what you need to understand as a patient is that you absolutely need at least those things which check your thyroid. And I'm going to tell you the, there's some optional ones that we'll be talking about. And I include cortisol and sex hormone binding globulin, which I'll talk about in a second. But no matter what, you need to be getting the TSH free T3, free T4, reverse T3, total T3, and then of course, at least your thyroid antibodies if this is your first time. You don't always need to recheck the thyroid antibodies, but you should be getting all of these thyroid specific tests. Um, it's definitely the first time, and I would, I would argue that they're still necessary for repeat testing. The other ones that I've added on, which I think are important, would be sex hormone binding globulin and cortisol because of the way that cortisol impacts your thyroid and how SHBG can act as like a proxy uh, to determine how much is actually being absorbed. So those are important factors. But what I want you to know is that you need to be getting at least this box right here. So that's all of the thyroid tests that I talked about. Again, that's TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, and total T3. And thyroid antibodies on your first test at least. If they come back negative, you don't necessarily have to retest unless you're showing signs of an autoimmune disease. Um, but these should be rechecked um, as you, when you do it, uh, at least the thyroid. Okay. So you need to be prepared to know that you need the full panel. If you're just getting the TSH and the free T3 or free T4, you're probably not getting the free T3. You're probably just getting the TSH and maybe uh, the free T4. That's just not going to cut it. Okay. If you've never had these tests, you have to get them all. Um, and once you have all that information, it'll be made uh, a lot more clear as to why. And if you haven't, be sure you watch my other videos where I talk about why it's so important to get these lab tests. The second most important thing that you should do is ensure that you get your labs tested at a specific time. Now, it really matters that it's done in the morning. Okay, so that's, no matter what, it needs to be done in the morning. Now, my recommendation is at 8 a.m. And the reason I recommend it at 8 a.m. is because you're also getting this guy here, which is cortisol. And cortisol and thyroid hormone have um, a rhythm or circadian rhythm at which they kind of go throughout the day. So if this was a 24-hour time period um, here, you would see that cortisol and thyroid would sort of go up and down throughout the day. So checking 8 a.m. is when thyroid and cortisol are at their highest, okay? Now cortisol, or technically cortisol peaks at 8 a.m., thyroid peaks for between 6 and 9 a.m. But if you're going to be checking cortisol, which I recommend, you gotta get it at 8. Subsequent repeat tests can be between 6 and 9 a.m., but it should never be earlier than 6 a.m. or later than 9 a.m. Now, you're probably gonna say, well, what if I work night shifts? That's gonna be a problem, okay? We know from studies that people who work night shifts live on average seven fewer years than people who do not, and a lot of this probably has to do with the disruption it causes to this rhythm. So try and get it as close to you can as this. I recommend the 8 a.m., um, but repeat tests can be somewhere between 6 and 9 a.m. if you don't get the cortisol with it as well. But it's gotta be in the morning because of the reason I mentioned here. 
Number three is it must be in the fasted state. So fasted meaning, of course, you haven't eaten. I recommend at least like a eight to 10 hour fasted window. It's not, this is not one of those things that's gonna break your results completely, but you should understand that consuming food, any sort of food of any type, will impact or stimulate or decrease thyroid function slightly. Remember, your thyroid helps control your metabolism, and what does food do when it gets inside your body? It must be metabolized, right? So it's, it's going to stimulate that sort of process, and it may impact your thyroid levels. So what I recommend is, if you're already getting at 8 a.m., you should be fasting anyway for other tests that need to be fasted for, like insulin and um, blood sugar and um, your cholesterol and so on. So you might as well go in the fasted state, and then that way you know that your whatever food that you've eaten, you've eaten is not impacting your thyroid in any way. Okay, so 8 a.m. fasted state, full th full panel. I think everyone's sort of on board here. Now here's another important thing, which people get, they mess this up all the time, and that is you must take it before taking your thyroid medication. So this question comes up all the time. They say, well, I take my thyroid medication at 7 a.m. 7 How should I get my thyroid lab tested? And I'll say, well, go get it at 8 a.m. and just push back taking your medication about an hour and a half. So you can go into 8 a.m., um, you'll get your, your labs tested at that point. You'll be on basically hour 24 or hour 25 of not having any thyroid um, medication in your system. And then what that will give us is data which shows you what is the lowest point of which your, where your thyroid is at after you've taken your medication. So let me draw this out on a little graph. So once you take your thyroid medication, it shoots up and then it kind of decreases over time. And then this is you know the 24 hour period. We want to know what your thyroid lab tests are in this period when it's gonna be at its lowest. Because what's gonna happen is the next morning you're gonna take it and what's it's gonna do that again, okay, right? And this is just gonna keep uh, continuing here and it's always gonna, the, your thyroid lab or your thyroid hormone inside your blood is always gonna be at its lowest right before you take your next dose of thyroid medication. So it needs to be taken before. If you take your thyroid medication, then go get your labs drawn, you cannot trust the results. Okay, it's gonna make you look more, more hyperthyroid. You're not gonna be hyper in that sense, but it's gonna make it look like you have more thyroid hormone than you really do. So do not make that mistake. Number five is if possible, um, don't test on days 10 through 20 of your menstrual cycle. This is only important for those women who are menstruating. If you're postmenopausal or if your cycle is you know, all over the place, this is less important. But if you are on a somewhat regular cycle, do not test between days 10 and 20 of your menstrual cycle. The reason is simple. On those days, your progesterone tends to be higher than it is for the rest of the cycle. It doesn't quite peak. I mean, it, it peaks somewhere on the later half of the cycle, day 14 through 28. But these are the days where you wanna make sure that um, you, have not, you are not testing your thyroid because of the influence that progesterone has on thyroid function, okay? will alter your results and it will make them less accurate. So avoid it on these days, which means you still have days, let's just say zero through 10 and 21 through 30, or I guess this would be zero through nine. So you still have plenty of days in there to test. Again, if you're postmenopausal, if you're a man, this does not matter, you can check it on any, any day. But if you are a menstruating woman, not days 10 through 20 of your menstrual cycle. Number six is you must, 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 and this is a very important one, avoid taking biotin for at least one to two days prior to getting your labs tested. Again, I just had a story of a woman who emailed me and she said that she had her labs tested and she was taking bi biotin and she didn't realize it. She just read an article um, that I wrote about biotin and the way it interferes. Um, and if you haven't, I would recommend that you read that or watch the video on that topic. But what happened is she looked at her multivitamin she was taking, she found that it had a really high dose of biotin. And then she told her doctor and she said, I wanna retest it. So she stopped, take it, she stopped taking the biotin, she got her labs retested and her TSH was the difference between 0.9 and 13. So a massive difference between the two. Now, now, that's not going to be the case for every single one of you, but the point is biotin has a big time impact on your thyroid lab test because it interferes with the assay. Okay, it interferes with the testing. It doesn't actually interfere with your thyroid, okay, but it makes it look like your thyroid is higher than it really is. So this is this is bad for most people because it's making you look more hyperthyroid, um, even though you're probably hypothyroid. So if that's you know, an issue for you, you got to make sure you're avoiding biotin. Though at the most, if you really want to be absolutely certain it's not in your system, five days is sort of like the longest that I recommend that you do that. But at least one to two days prior should be enough to get it out of your system so it's not interfering with the lab test. Okay, so that's biotin. And by the way, this one, the avoiding of the biotin should be done every time you get your labs tested. The days 10 through 20 of the cycle is somewhat less important. Remember I said you don't necessarily have to do all these things. That one, I don't think you have to do every single time, but again, the first time, absolutely. Now, um, if your doctor is savvy enough, you can just say, hey, you know, I got it on day 12 of my cycle and they can sort of like, they can account for that, right? But you need to make sure that they know that that's the case. If you just go in and you're like, well, that's a strange result and I don't know why and the doctor's scratching their head and you're like, I don't know what happened. Well, it's probably because you did that. So just make sure that you're aware that that's the case. And then number seven is this has to do with 
the frequency with which you retest your thyroid labs. And you never want to do a, a test sooner than every six weeks. Okay, It takes about that amount of time for your body to reach equilibrium with your thyroid. So if you have made adjustments, let's say you had your labs tested um, a week ago and you want to go, you, you made some changes and you're feeling a little bit good and you want to see, oh, are they working? So that's the question you have. So you want to go get your labs tested again to see if they're working. You cannot do it because it's too soon. You're not gonna, it's not gonna be reflective of what's actually happening in your body. So don't fall for that trap. I have some people who check their labs as frequently as every four weeks, and I have no idea why, because it doesn't give you any actionable data. You have to wait for that six week period so that you can see what is actually going on in your, in your, in your blood um, with your thyroid. So again, here are six things here, or actually seven, sorry, there's seven. Seven things that you should be doing um, not necessarily every time, but definitely the first time to ensure that you are getting the, the most accurate results that you can possibly get. The reason and the concern here is if you do not do these, and let's say you just run in willy-nilly and just get, you know, partial lab tests at, you know, 7 a.m. and it wasn't, you know, you didn't take into account when to take your medication, what are you going to do with those results? They're going to be, they're going to be less helpful. They're not going to be something that you can act upon. And you as the patient are going to be confused um, when your doctor makes changes based off this poor, these poor results and it's not reflective of what's going on in your body. So I would say a good portion of you fit into this category where if you just did this correctly, you could actually see what's happening in your body. So take that. If you if you if this information is new to you, leave a comment below. Say, oh, well, I didn't know about this, or I'm going to be doing that. And if you have had experience, like the woman that I mentioned previously with the biotin, and you've made some changes and it, you've showed dramatic changes in your results, leave that comment down below as well, because I want people to see that these things actually matter. Um, by the way, if you haven't already, be sure that you go down and you download my free thyroid resources. I have eight uh, downloadable PDFs that you can get. Things like that include things like. Uh, foods to avoid if you have thyroid problems, how to get your doctor to work with you, clinical studies, which will help your doctor, you know, do these therapies that I talk about here and so on. So I think you'll really like that. You can download those for free in the link below. Um, and otherwise, that's all I have for you today. And I'll see you guys in the next one.